So here I am uh, with my little pet project. I was working on uh, uh, recent hackathons and I'd like to share the news and hear maybe opinions. Catch me on the Foreman booth if you like to talk about it more. We have only 15 minutes. So why I'm doing that is, the reason for that is that I think Fortero don't have a good image-based provisioning unattended story. Now with the cloud, everyone is now doing image-based provisioning, right? This is the right way to do it in the cloud mostly. And uh, even other distributions like Ubuntu, if you install Ubuntu today, it is actually image-based installation and there's cloud in it. Uh, also, uh, there are other tools uh, like Canonical Metal as a Service that actually does uh, image-based provision, uh, provisioning for bare metal. And I spent a decade working with Foreman and Satellite, uh, maintaining its provisioning capabilities. And these two solutions, Mass and Satellite, are common in a way that they are uh, pretty tough to, uh, to install. They really want to control all infrastructure. They, they want to control uh, DHCP server, TFTP server. And if, if, you, if you can live with that, it's, that's great. It works well. If you can't afford it, maybe you already have a DHCP server or other infrastructure doesn't really work uh, that way, so then you're, you know, fighting against it. So I was thinking, like, maybe, maybe can there be a, a little service that could provide you uh, bare metal image-based provisioning? Because there's a common secret that uh, Anaconda can actually do image-based provisioning, and this feature has been added in, I think, 7.2 Enterprise Linux, and it's been meant for uh, virtualization, like overt, uh, but these days it's still used for OS3 installations, and you can actually use this for uh, normal Fedora or RHEL installations. So I was thinking, thinking like maybe I could write a project, small little service that you just run, and it will provide opinionated provisioning for image-based provisioning. It's important, so you need to have an image, and then you can deploy it. Uh, based around Anaconda, so it, would, it, it is built for Anaconda. It will wor not work for other distributions at the moment because it uses some unique features. And it's also based uh, that uh, it only, only supports EFI HTTP boot, which is basically like a simplified or more modern version of Pixie booting. You don't need to have a TFTP server. You don't need to have a like, uh, really complex setup. Uh, it's much easier. It's just HTTP or HTTPS. And of course, secure boot and HTTPS and DHCP v6, maybe these are all the features that uh, customers really ask, right? So I was thinking like, can I do that? And here, am I, here I am with, uh, with my uh, project I want to share with you. So first of all, if you want to do any kind of image-based provisioning, you need to build an image, right? A couple of options. You can use Live Media Creator, which is in Fedora. It is, I think, not in RHEL. Um, or second option I would uh, recommend this one is to use Composer. OS built Composer is, is a component program, a daemon that you can install on Fedora or RHEL and maybe other distributions, I don't know. And it, it is a command line client, so you can use it to actually build what's called Blueprint. Basically, it's like a, which packages you want to build, uh, what uh, the users you want to create, and page keys and stuff like that, and then you, you, you create an image. Third option is if you go to console.com, if you have an account, you can even use free account, build images there. Now the service, it is uh, basically a Go application, very small. It's called Forester Controller. That is the service that run, you need to run. You only need to give it a configuration uh, in a sense that you need to point it to a directory where it will store images. That's basically it. It also needs Postgres and three tables, so it's not really big. And there's a CLI, and that's all you have. So you just build it. It's not in Fedora or anything like that. It's, it's a prototype. I have a GitHub I'll share with you. And then the thing you need to do on your infrastructure is to set your DHCP server in a way that you just want to point it to the, this service, right? So in my case, it's running on port 8000. And you need to go uh, and give it the slash boot slash EFI. And that's all, all you need to do. It's like three, literally three lines for Livert. For testing, you can actually use Livert because that, is, that won't, you know, you know with the, you can continue using the default network. And for ISC DHCP, you would do the similar configuration. Now the workflow is a little bit different from what you maybe know from Foreman. Uh, I call it a la carte menu. And if you have, if you're familiar with Beaker, it's actually very similar. You first register an appliance. So in this workflow, EFI really don't work well with fallback mechanisms of BIOS, where you, where you boot from network and if it doesn't boot, then boot from hard drive. That doesn't really work in EFI. So this service 
actually provides uh, out-of-bound management capabilities, meaning uh, it, can, it needs to be able to power on a server and power it off and change boot order. So for this, I'm planning to add Redfish API, right? Um, and also um, maybe I, IPMI in the future. For now, so the project only supports Libvirt. That is meant for testing. It's not meant for that you would like to install uh, images using booting from network. That's really not the way to, to work. So first thing you need to register appliance, in this case, you know, Libvirt, that is only supported appliance right now. And then you, de you do do enlisting operation, which terminology is a little bit vague. I'm not still trying to find it. This is borrowed from Ubuntu Mass, but basically it will go and search all your, um, you know, let me say blades within your chassis, or in this case, Libvirt VMs, and it will store the in, the, in, the, in the inventory, in the database, some information about them, specifically UUID, so you can actually power them on and off. And then you can power them on using, using, uh, using the API of the service and it will boot into Anaconda. And Anaconda will, because these systems are not yet set or configured to be installed, it will actually do uh, what I call discovery. It will basically uh, try to run a DMID code and find amount of CPUs and memory, stuff like that. It will report these facts back to the service, right? That's exactly what Beaker does, except Beaker actually installs the system. This one is basically an anaconda, and then it shuts down. And once uh, you're ready, or before you can be ready, you need to upload an image. So you have an ISO image that you've previously built or downloaded from our portal, um, or, or created in uh, OS Build Composer. You upload it to the service, and the service, oh my god, hopefully this works. Uh, and the service will actually uh, uh, Extract some uh, things. Extract some files, key files like shim, bootloader, grub, anaconda, and the image itself. And uh, then finally, you're ready to acquire the system. Uh, again, terminology is, is acquiring means like you take it from your list of inventory of available machines, and you just want to put this particular image onto this system, and that's it. If you're ready to release the system back to the pool, you just call it release. And this is basically the operation workflow. As I've said, I'm using some unique features of Anaconda, specifically live, live EMG or Prescript and uh, HTTP headers, but this is like not in, important. This is my uh, Fedora cockpit, and I'm running terminal uh, here. This is how it looks like, the, the service. You just, you know, call a CLI. It has three commands, image, system, and appliance. So first step, I have an image here uh, called test1, and the important thing is it is UFI image. It needs to be, uh, sorry, UFI uh, VM because UFI HTTP boot is a special thing. It doesn't work on BIOS because BIOS uh, PIXI doesn't have like a full HTTP stack. It only has like UDP, very simple protocol. So you need to have an uh, EFI. So the idea here is you have a bunch of servers and you have a, let's say, IPMI or Redfish API management. Uh, so you can actually like do the same workflow with these. Right. If you want to an image in the cloud redhead.com portal. This is how it looks like. Make sure to check bare metal here. I saw that is the, the type of the image you want to build. Or you use uh, Image Builder. Image Builder has a nice user interface. This is my home uh, server. And you can actually uh, install OS Build Cockpit plugin, I think. And it allows you to like do all the customizations, like put the SSH keys there, and first boot scripts and things like that. So that's great. So once I have an image, I upload it here. So this line, image upload, you give it a name and then the ISO, right? And then I list, the, list the, all the images. So in this case, there's only one image called the rel 9. Now I'm ready to define appliance. Uh, this is basically like a machine or chassis with, with uh, multiple blades. In this case, again, this project is a really early prototype. So it only supports Libvirt as a, like a testing, testing machine, right? And so I give it a name, and it only supports Unix local mm, connection, right? Now I can do enlisting operation. Enlisting does is actually it connects to the appliance and lists all the all the in this case VMs. These are not not, not blades. I'm giving giving give it a, a, reg, a regular expression. I want only uh, to use uh, everything that starts with test because I have uh, multiple VMs there that I don't want to uh, mess. And have a list of, of systems. So every system has a important thing is MAC address or multiple MAC addresses. It's a list. Every system has a like generated name, pun, cockpook, whatever this is. It's just a random name, so you can use it. And then the most important thing is UID, so actually can do a power operation. Now I'm going to reset it 
Reset may, may basically means boot from network, like, like connect to the appliance and boot it from network. And now you'll see, you know, the system is booting up on the network. We'll try PIXC first and then falls back to the HTTP uh, boot over IPv4. Anaconda boots up. And in, in the background, you can't see it, but it will execute a Python script that will just collect some data about the system, very similar to Beaker. And in the future, you, you could maybe search for systems that have, that have more than 100 gigs of memory or some stuff like that. It's not uh, implemented yet. And then it powers it off. But now if I uh, show the PEM system uh, again, I see a bunch of, bunch of, uh, bunch of new you know, facts. And in this phase, this system could actually do like CPU burn or memory testing or after provisioning, it could actually wipe the drive. That's what Ubuntu Mass does. That's in, in, nothing like that is implemented. And now the final and the most important thing is system acquire. You give it an image, rel9 in my case, and uh, you, you uh, I'm, I'm actually, I forgot to uh, type in the name of the system, like make address or the name of the system. That, that, that would not work, but uh, suppose that I've typed it in, Anaconda starts up, and it, do it downloads actually live EMG tar Tarbo, which actually is your file system. Uh, prepares the drive storage, uh, you know, copies the file over, um, prepares bootloader and stuff, and then it reboots and your system is installed. So that is it. That is my project uh, uh, called Forester. And go, going forward, so I'd like to hear your opinion. If you would, you know, like me to continue work on this, and maybe I need to write uh, write documentation. Uh, of course. Until I implement Redfish, it's sort of like unusable. Why would you uh, implement provisioning of images onto liver like that? That's insane, right? You would just upload the image into liver and run it, of course. So that doesn't make sense, of course. So Redfish is the first one. My, maybe Terraform plugin. There are some bare metal Terraform plugins these days, but these are really tied to like a specific vendor or specific environment. Here, this is like, if you want to install Red Hat or Fedora, and you have like a DHCP server, you can just, and a system that has PMC operation like, like Redfish or IPMI, you can do that. And uh, maybe Ansible module or some integration with console or maybe al alternative to Beaker, uh, it could be interesting. So many options, um, I'm eager to hear from you if you like it or not. So now a minute, we have a two minutes for questions and find me at the Foreman booth if you want to talk about it a little bit more. That is my project. Thank you. And this, here's the URL. If you want to test it, it's really easy to like just jump in and uh, forester.org slash forester on GitHub. Thank you.